Okay. New screen should be up momentarily. There we go. And um, let me get in Globex High and Globex Low, and then we will go from there. So, let's see, ES, we have 11 and a quarter Globex Low. Okay, that's fine. I can live with that. We'll have to adjust that area just slightly, maybe. 11.25. Here, this is just as well put there, and we will add. Oops, slow. And then Globex, I believe, was 24 and a quarter. Let's go take a look. Twenty-eight, we made it to. Okay, fair enough. So that puts us. At least that was a better spot for it. Okay, and I will adjust those momentarily, but for now, just know that that is Globex high. Move this down. Okay, and I will save the file and pop it out to everybody here really quick. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we're having pretty interesting markets. One of the things I would suggest, particularly to my, my coaching clients, guys, Print out the chart in CL. That is picture perfect of what a market crash looks like. And even if you don't trade it, the pattern remains um, awfully similar. Uh, and uh, uh, it is an important, it is a very important uh, way to identify that the markets, when they crash, they don't crash from the highs. They crash after um, considerable corrections. So, second here, copy. Okay, let's see. Just like to get to this list, and I'll have everyone done, Ron. I'm not sure if you're in today, but there you go. Um, Jackson. Um, Raj. I'm not sure if there's anyone else, Robert. Okay, I think. I think I got everyone who needs the TradeStation file. If I've missed anyone, please hit me up. Bill, I didn't get you. Sorry. Now I think I've gotten everyone. So let's get started. Um, okay, so we're going to start on ES. We'll roll over to NQ, and we will go from, from there. So the first thing is we're at critical areas, obviously, in, um, in both markets. Um, the... That 1920 was very critical. You saw how we snapped off of it the first time through. Um, it's important to note that all the trading below 1920 has taken place after Asia market and not during the RTH. That's important because all that trading was done without balancing against the actual S&P 500 index, right? So obviously, um, 19, that 1920 area in terms of – let's open this up. Okay, so um, – 
before I jump into that, because there's a bunch of new people in the room. So a little bit of this will be review for you guys. Some of this will just be old hat. And um, the Q&A, the Q&A. Um, it's difficult for me to see the Q&A in GoToMeeting. I do not know why, but I will do my best to um, answer questions as I go. But um, first, I'm going to start off an executive summary, basically saying where I'm looking to take trades and the basic strategy. And then I go into greater detail as we get into the open. Um, and then after, I will stay on after the open today. And, um, and as I see my trade set up, I'll lay them out. Um, so the idea is for my trading, for those of you that are new in the room, is that I trade on a, I trade on a leveraged, concentrated basis. I'm not recommending everyone do that. But, uh, yeah, I see that, buddy. Uh, I see that, IB. Um, the idea is that I trade on a concentrated leverage basis that I look for only the highest odds entries that I can get, which means I pass on a lot of mediocre trades. The idea being in how I arrived at this point, long story short, was I used to be a boom bust trader, not complete bust, but I would go on these huge equity swings. Uh, over a decade ago, I decided to end that through the use of volume profile and in working with a one-on-one -on -one with uh, actually two trading coaches over an extended period of time. So what I've tried to do is bring, um, set up a set of rules and guide and guidance uh, for myself, so that I can um, so that I can stay consistently um, high odds profitable trader. Now what I'm trying to do here is extend some of that knowledge onto the people that are in the room and to the guys that I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with. Okay, so um, all that all that being said. Uh, let's jump into today, and then uh, if you have any questions, uh, my email is trade, trade and perform at gmail.com, just like it is on the uh, Twitter handle on StockTwits. If you have any specific questions afterwards, you're welcome to email me, and I'll do my best to answer them as I can. In the meantime, uh, just keep up the best you can. So the idea is, obviously, the most basic concept is first time into a zone, right? We come into a zone. I expect a pause and a counter rotation for two points. Doesn't always happen, just happens very often. When I'm done with this, I'll give a quick review of how yesterday worked. It's pretty much picture perfect on how the day is supposed to go. The highest odds time of day are between 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Doesn't happen every day that way, but it's usually the area where it's easiest for me to make consistent, uh, to get consistent P&L, which is very, very important, uh, at least to me, right? The afternoon gets harder. Why? Because after 10.30 a.m., London drops off. We lose European participation. It doesn't mean the market stops moving. It just means that it gets thinner and more erratic. Yesterday afternoon is a great example of that. There's fewer participants uh, when it's thinner and there's fewer participants. And they're in both sides of that equation. Remember, and I talk really fast, so if you need me to slow down, just say so. The important equation there is not just the lack of is not just the fewer participants. It's when you have fewer participants and both sides of those participants are both aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers, right? That's where you get those really fast, wide ripping whips, which I was a victim of yesterday. I missed covering. I had a, a uh, cover in to cover a short from 1934 and a quarter, I think I was, uh, at 1920, and I literally missed it by a tick. And within minutes, um, it had traded seven points away from uh, my cover point. I still ended up doing nicely on the trade, but it's not fun to give back seven points on a trade. Uh, long story short, that's the difficulty that comes with after 10.30 in the morning. So the first thing that we're concerned with off the open, obviously, we're gapping down. This 1920 area is critical, okay? Below here, where it opens the doors to coming all the way down and testing into this uh, 1903. And if you'll recall from a long, long time ago, okay, so this is a contract adjusted low. The overnight low was 1890. That would make it now 1880. That opens the door to come down all the way into 1880 if if we hold get below and hold below this 1920. Okay, I'm not saying we're going there today, but just eventually it opens the door. There's a lot of space in between, but there's no open gaps, which are critical and the market likes to close open gaps. Okay. So that being said, <clears throat> The key rotation size that we're looking for today is 10 points up and down. Again, I'll go through that example in the morning. So it looks like we're opening, and we could be anywhere in the next 30 minutes, but it looks like as of now, we're opening above the 1922. 
it'll be key that we hold Thursdays low. If we open at 1922, and again, I'm going to have to adjust this probably several times before we get to the open, right? I will not be trading Thursdays low. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to want to come in and give Globex low a shot. They may not. I might be wrong about that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they'll give Globex low a shot or Globex high. Um, Globex high makes sense. It was actually, I had a choice between 1928 and 30 or 1930 and 1932. But the reality is, is the whole area is actually a legitimate um, zone, the entire thing from top to bottom. Um, and that is a result of having a wide range from um, yesterday. So um, first time into 1928, I would uh, suspect if we can get at least a six-point rotation up into that area, that we would get rejection. Here's the caveat. The less aggressive trader will try to get to this 1930-32 um, trade location for a move back lower. A more aggressive trader will work at 1928. Um, I will play it by um, watching the price action. In other words, I will not automatically take it at Globex High. I want to see a pause in the action. And I want to see a very quick reaction back to the downside. If it sits here for 15 or 20 minutes, kind of just whipping back and forth, and I'm unable to get a two-point scale, really even if it does it for 10 minutes, and I'm unable to get a two-point scale, <clears throat> the key to my trading is being able to get risk off as quickly as possible. Okay, So if I'm unable to get a scale, odds are I will flat out of this trade and look for another opportunity. And I want to be really, really clear about this. The ranges have been extremely wide the last two days. And um, so a six-point rotation is not a lot. A 10, a 10 to 15-point rotation is more appropriate for, me, for feeling, feeling more secure that we'll get a measurable rotation lower. Okay, so essentially um, this could easily come in, break to 1932, come back down, and head towards Globex lows. Would not be a shocker, right? Dependingly, depending particularly on how many people shorted overnight, banking that we were going to actually open at 1910 and come down and test at 1900, and whether they are um, crossways or not off the open. So one of the, what's one of the ways that we measure that, right? Well, the first thing that we look for is open drive higher. Again, I'll, if there's time, I'll go back and give an example, actual chart example, but it's characterized very simply. First of all, uh, at this point, we would be looking at a gap up at 1923.50, but not much. So the first question is, do we get gap fill? Um, half gap really wouldn't matter here. There's not a lot to get a half gap out of, right? Do we get gap fill? And is the first bar, usually a picture perfect version of this would be three bars straight up with little to no counter rotation. Uh, the tick would be positive off the open and maintain for the most part above zero. I'm referring to the NYSE tick out of the gate. Um, and uh, if this is the case, right, the first counter to this trade, uh, the first entry on this trade is if we were to get a zero tick, uh, would be our first long. Okay, the market's volatile. There's nothing that says, I want to be clear, I'm not bearish or bullish. There's nothing that says we can't go back to 1970. Okay, and that 1920 is simply the bottom of the range. 1970 is the top of the range. And... Um, <clears throat> And, excuse me a second, guys. Dog's going to be bothering me here for a second. I'll be right back. Let's go. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so open drive higher, lack to little to no rotation. The key to this to knowing that we're actually in an open drive higher, potential trend day up, the first five-minute bar will be marked by the low, okay? Pretty simple to identify this without getting run over. One of the big keys, or one of the big problems a lot of retail traders have is you get caught in one of these big sweeps down, right, or inverse big sweeps up. If you just wait the first 15 minutes, um, I'll, I can show you plenty of pictures and you realize, hey, this is open drive lower or open drive higher, all you have to do 
all you have to do is step out past the first hour, and usually things have settled down, and trades will almost always set up, especially on an open drive up. Okay. The second thing that's really causing a lot of traders issues is, and I've gone over this uh, multiple times, is that um, the nature of the market has changed. And I believe the nature of the market has changed to a pre-QE environment that we had primarily from really all of history, but specifically 2001 through 2008. And that is, we would have days, just like the last couple days, where we're going to get significant rotations both up and down. And we can literally end up with days that end up at the high of the day, have rotation up for 5 points, down for 10 points, up for 10 points, down for 10 points, then up for 15, and close at the high of the day. This is very unlike what we have had. The primary pattern that we've experienced prior to the last couple of weeks has been if we have a down day, push up, push down, counter rotation, then up to the middle of the day, and then we either usually we would trade off flat, low odds that we would trade back down, and occasionally we would get a mirror image where we push all the way back up. The new image, okay, and then vice versa on up days. Here, let me draw this on this so it looks a little bit easier to see. Up days have looked like this followed by this or this followed by this, okay? But getting this followed by this followed by this has been incredibly rare. I would expect, if my theory is right, could be wrong, but if my theory is right, I would expect a whole lot more of this as a possibility and a whole lot more of this as patterns that we will be seeing all the way around, all the way across the board. And we saw something similar to that yesterday. I'll go into that in just a moment. I was just too tired to do a trade review last night. Okay, so that being said, where am I looking to take trades? Assuming that we stick this 1922.50, I don't want to trade at yesterday's low. Why? I have no edge or idea as to which way they are going to take it. Okay, ideally the first place, if I'm going to speculate to a rotation of the downside, is Globex high. Preferably at 1922, I'm looking at 1932 for a 10 point rotation down. And realize my stop would be two points behind here. Okay, so because of the way the market is stacking up, we're, we're starting to get some zones stacking on top of each other. There's no way to clear that up, except that if you're patient and you wait for one minute tick divergence, okay, the white zone is preferable for a downside move versus the uh, versus the zone below, right? I'd rather see a push up into the 1934-36 if I'm less aggressive for a push back down and a test of Thursday's low. If we can push all the way up to 36 and get a backside test of Thursday's low, there's a good chance we hold and start pushing up into these areas. If we are unable to get to the white zone and we reject either out of Globex low or this 1932-1930-32, um, I would not trust Thursday's low and instead would look for a test of Globex low. That being said, I'm going to remove the 1914 and three quarters, it's still a valid trade, but it is unlikely that we get to 1914 and three quarters and then decide not to test Globex low. So <clears throat> let me look at the price action back there and adjust the chart really quick. One second okay, there's the 1914 we were working off of. 1915 from yesterday. Oh, okay, I see where I'm going to adjust this. Hold on a second here. Well, happy days must be here again. Oh, I forgot there's a Fed speaker right now, which may be what's driving a lot of this action. Okay, so 1915 was an open gap. That made sense. 1912 to... Um, okay, so here's the issue with, with 1911 and a quarter. I want to be aware of that. If we don't snap right out of this 1911, okay, we are poorly auctioned all the way down to 1903, okay? There's, um, 1906 can make an argument for it, but really it's 1903 and three quarters, okay? So, um, how would I want to trade this? So, technically, you have this zone, and what I would do is leave it just like it is. I would consider this a relatively weak zone, um, and 
I'm going to eliminate the 1950 and 60, and instead I'm going to use the 1911 uh, and a quarter Globex low to 1912 and three quarters as the zone. Okay, and be aware, I'm going to make this a weak zone. That there is um, that they did respond yesterday, right after the close. There's enough people to respond off that 1950-50 um, to leave that there, but I will not be trading it. Okay, the reason why I say that. Let me get back over here. The reason why I say that is because it's quite possible that we get below Thursday's low, come down, get a quick two-point reaction, and then come down into Globex low. Globex low is in a, what I consider a poorly auctioned area. So in poorly auctioned areas, again, I'm going over this because there's newbies in the room, is that uh, there's three ways to auction a poorly auctioned area. Uh, and again, I'll give an example from yesterday. But the three ways are we can just simply zip right through to support, Often what we'll do is we'll trade halfway down, trade back up, and then zip back down, uh, and then find a buy response right there. And then the third way is we just simply grind all the way through it and re-auction the whole damn thing. That's the most painful way to watch, right? Okay. I have no doubt that um, the market's spiking because we are having a Fed speaker in exactly one minute. So uh, our picture could change a lot between now and then. So um, given that if we're opening at 1924, again, I'm not very eager to take Thursday's low. It's been tested multiple times. It broke overnight. My guess is we're going to come and give a test of this Globex low. This is the first place I'm interested in taking a long for an attempted move to back to the upside. Okay, a rotation from Globex low up into the back of Thursday's low. This 1922 gives a 10-point rotation. If I can see the price action slow down or I can see tick, di tick divergence in here, I'll actually attempt to take a short here with a two-point stop behind and push lower. I'm not going to be in a rush here. I'm really going to want to watch the price action here pretty closely. Uh, I'm not overly eager. That We've had such a big wave up and down that the odds are that we, we need a balance day to kind of let everyone sort out what's going on. So I think it's unlikely that we're just going to rip to the downside. Okay, I'm expecting balance. So that being said, if I can get a location down here for a move back to the upside, um, I will be hesitant uh, outside of a quick scalp at Tuesday's low to push, and my guess is that we would push back into Globex high and possibly back up into the white zone, and that we could balance between there, and then afternoon is wild card, either up or down, okay? So first place, I'm absolutely looking to take along right here at 1912 and three quarters to 1911 and a quarter. Will not be taking a trade here unless I get one minute tick divergence, okay? And I will take a trade first time into 1903, three quarters to 1901 and three quarters, okay? Um, and then again, at 1897 and three quarters to 1895 and three quarters, I'm looking to take a trade. And then finally, we get deep enough, okay, into this 1893.75 to 1891.75. First time into this location, I will take a long. As long as I can get a two-point scale off this area, right, um, I will not move up my stop. Normally, once I take my first scale, I usually at least move the stop on whatever the balance is to a net break even um, or to a swing low, one of the two. In these areas, because they are high odds reversals, what will often happen is we'll spend extra time in locations like this. And so what will end up happening is we come in, we get our move off the top of the zone, right? Then I'll come back in for a test of the back end of the zone and then move out. If you move your stop to break even, you tend to get stopped before you can get the significant counter trade, right? And it can become very frustrating. So the way that I handle that is, assuming here that I'm able to get my two-point scale, I will leave the stop two points behind, if, um, and I will scale half the position. That way, if I do get stopped, it's a net one-point stop on the entire position versus a four-point stop. And uh, yes, I realize the risk-reward's inverted on my zones. Uh, that's why it must maintain a high win rate. Most of the zones, um, and particularly since August, we've been um, well over 80% on the zones, um, and most of the year they stay over 70% win rates. So that's how I'm able to take the zone without worrying. Um, let me take a second to step back and explain why I use the zones the way I do. This comes straight from Mark Douglas and uh, uh, Dr. Steenbarger and Andrew Menneker, all of them great trading coaches. Um, and the idea is that I have my trades pre-planned, my exits pre-planned, and my stops pre-planned. The reason for that is, part of the reason why anxiety arises is if you're constantly asking questions about what the market's doing or what the market's going to do. 
questions lead to more questions. That leads to possibilities that can't be answered, right? That leads to anxiety. The way you counter that anxiety so that you can trade calmly is A, you accept the risk, right? You simply assume, and I assume on every single trade that I take that I'm going to get my stop hit. Secondly, I consider my stop getting hit a good thing, not a bad thing. It protects my equity and lets me come back trade the next day, right? Once I'm no longer worried about my stop getting hit, I can simply relax and watch what the meta communication is from the market and not worry about every tick up or down. Too many people, particularly retail traders, try to read every single tick and guess whether we're going up or down. The majority, of the gross majority of the time, and I'll demonstrate this in a second from tomorrow, the gross majority of the time, first time in the zone, results in a counter rotation up for two points, okay, um, as long as it's done within 25 minutes, okay, and if it gets stopped, it rarely goes back two points and then comes back and gives a profit, so uh, meaning two points behind the zone. So the stop two points behind the zone is the stop that I use universally. Uh, depending on where we are in the range, I either bring that stop up or I leave it leave it where it is. The only place I'm willing to take today a complete stop without any questions is this 1882 and a quarter to 1880 and a quarter. I want to give some some for guys who have been with me for a while or y'all if y'all have been trading for a long while, I want to give a quick picture where this is. Remember everything shifted down 10 points. So when we're talking about taking this 1880 and a quarter to 1882 and a quarter, this is the old 1890 that we bounced off of, if you recall, way back in December. I'm not going to pull up the chart, but the market was melting, okay? We overnight, we hit 1890 and a quarter, I believe, was a low. We gapped the next day to um, 1905, traded to 1920, I believe, by the end of the day, and never looked back. We never came back and retested. So this would be the first retest of that overnight low if we came into this. And I would expect strong response of buyers out of here. I'm completely willing not only to lose four points here, but to enter two times. I want to be clear. I'm willing to lose two times in this zone. Uh, I'd be very shocked if that happens. But uh, I'm willing to lose twice, which means if I get ripped through here on my stop, which does happen on occasion, okay, I will look to reload if it retakes this zone and push back out to the upside. Okay, I would expect a significant rotation here. I will also be loading up on calls, uh, weekly calls for next week, and I will look for um, out-of-the-money calls that expire today if we get into this location. I highly doubt it, but we had a 40-point range yesterday, so it's possible, though not probable, right? So um, I have a plan for this area down here, and I will execute it if we get down. Um, I ex again, in this location, um, I do expect a rotation, a significant rotation back up. I need to get the two points in order to uh, leave my stop as is. Otherwise, um, otherwise, I'll close the position if I'm unable to get two points within 25 minutes and look for a different en entry in this area. Important, importantly, for those of you that are new in this room, the further we push down, look, ES nature is this. This is ES's nature for the majority of history. Okay, it tends, even if it's trending up, it tends to follow that except for the last six months where we've been going pretty much straight up, right, minus the last month. So there's no need to worry about whether you're catching a five-point rotation that's going to go down. The key to ES tends to be 10 and 20-point rotations. So it looks like we're opening at 1923. So let's pretend right now we've just opened 1923. Okay, first place I'm looking is either this 1932 or this 1934 and a quarter for a counter rotation back down. If this completely busts, right, goes without pausing, first thing I'm doing is I'm looking to the 1943 area, which actually would put me at 1941.81 right in front of this poorly auctioned area or behind. I really don't want to trade right here. This is a weak zone. A weak zone is indicative of an area that's been poorly auctioned. I can't explain that right now. We don't have the time, but basically it's hot. One or two things will happen. We'll either go straight through it or we'll have a quick rejection down and then go ahead and pass through it. We did a very similar model to this, and I'll show, I'll demonstrate that just in a second with yesterday's chart. So that being said, if we open, right, first thing I'm looking out for, open drive lower, right, 10-point rotation, and what zone that lands me in. I'm not looking to trade at 1955.50. I'm just aware that that is a trade location. They got a response to buy right after market yesterday. 
but I really think they're going to try and push down for Glovic low. First time in the Glovic low, that'll be a big enough stretch. I will take a trade to the long side first time up. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so, hold on one second here. On the upside, taking trades, right? If we get above 1932, I believe that was the high pre-FOMC. Let me go back and look really quick. Wow, we covered a lot of territory. Excuse me, that's right. 19, so 1932 is pre-FOMC rocket launch area, right? If we get above 1932, um, we, it's important that we reject out of this 36, which was resistance yesterday. But once we reject out of this, right, it's going to be important that we get back below that 1932, which will create a, a multi-day trap, if you would, for a pushback lower. So first time into the zone, I will take a short two-point stop behind. I need to see it back below 1932 relatively quickly, okay? My assumption is being, will be that this will be a short squeeze out because everyone sees that 1932. My assumption is they'll squeeze up 34 to 36 and then push back lower. Above 36, right, I, um, again, the ranges are causing, us con causing a little consternation here. Um, I would want one, actually one minute tick divergence here, right? If I take the trade, I need to get a two-point scale relatively quickly. I'm comfortable here with or without tick divergence, taking the trade at the front of the zone, and then back to Thursday's high. I don't think we get any of these today, but it's 40-point ranges, and I'm not going to pretend to say I know where the market's going. A lot of this, and just so you know, those of you who are new to the room, this gets a lot clearer once the market opens up. I have a lot easier, easier time. All of these are central time, by the way. Uh, Michael, asked, Michael, you asked, uh, um, all of these are central time that I'm giving. Um, but So a lot of this gets cleared up because essentially what I'm doing is speculating on what the market's going to do and how I'm going to react. What I know primarily, just at the core, is that the zone, as I said, I'm looking for first time in, rejection back lower, right? All these other explanations really complicate the picture. But, but I'm trying to explain what my logic is or my thinking is behind it, okay? So um, the, the basic idea will be that first time in, short of an open drive higher, I'm usually looking for a counter trade, first time, uh, first time into the zone for two points. If it's an orange zone or a red zone, I'm looking to push my trailers much further than I normally would if it's not an orange zone or a red zone. The range is extremely wide. I'd say that we're on ES, close to a historical extreme. Uh, over the last two years, and I would expect it to start to contract back to a first a 20 to 25 point range versus a 40 point range. Very difficult for the market to sustain a um, a 40 point range. Okay, so I want to take you all now over to the volume profile real quick so that we can get a bit, bigger picture of what's going on. Okay, so on the daily on ES. This is the RTH, meaning the day session only, New York Stock Exchange hours, okay, up into the futures close at 3.15 central time, okay. This is top of balance. This was the old bottom of balance right here, okay, and then that was extended slightly down through this period here as we were consolidating before we broke lower. So this is very simple. This is breakdown, retest. We pushed down to the bottom of the range. We established that this 1920 was going to hold. That made a lot of sense. Why did it make a lot of sense? Because this area right here was the top of the range prior to us breaking. Now, this is an important concept here. Usually, when we break ranges, we tend to gap out of them as we did here, and get back up at, um, and get back out of prior ranges. In other words, we gapped out of, this was the old trading range, we gapped out of it right here. When we broke back to the upside, we gapped out of this trading range to the upside. Based on where we're opening right now, okay, while we did trade underneath last night, we are not, okay, if this is the current bottom of the range right here, okay, we're not gapping down out of that range. As a matter of fact, we're, we're holding the range as of now. It is possible to trade down through that range, okay? It's just um, less likely, 
Okay, so usually what happens is when we trade down through the bottom of the range is that we will get a response to buy back up for a backside test, and we'll usually close, usually, not always, close near the bottom of that range, and then the following day, like as in Monday, we'll gap down and continue lower, okay? But it's important to know just mentally, right? It's a bad bet usually to bet uh, unless you are short from levels that are more reasonable, right? It is a bad idea to bet that we are actually going to break this lower level a lot of, because that, what happens is everyone stacks in short down here. They push, they're unable to push, or they get a brief push down and it snaps back up and traps and pushes them either to the midpoint or the other end of the range. Uh, I surely hope we're not going to start keeping getting 40-point whips up and down, but it's possible, right? The way that I approach this is very simple. 10-point rotations give me a lot of guidance when the range is wide like this, it makes it very easy for me to decide where I want to take trades combined with one minute tick divergence. Again, I'll try to call that the best I can um, once the market opens. Okay, so this becomes critical. Below here, below this 1920, this area right down here, from here down to here becomes critical. This was back in August. Right, um, I would not. Right, I would not if we come down through here. So we're essentially opening here. Right, I would not bet that we are going to break below this level today. It usually requires a gap down. Usually the first time down into these levels. Right, that would put us at 1891. That's a big stretch. That would put us at a 30 some odd point stretch. It's a poor bet, and I will be looking when we get down to this 1891 to be buying calls in this area, everything below 1900 really, to be buying calls for a backside test sometime next week back into this 1920. Could I be wrong? Yeah. That's why I buy out of the money calls and use less exposure as opposed to carrying the futures overnight. Okay, but it is highly unlikely, just like the first time once we broke down here and we came back up for a test, we kept rejecting back out. It usually requires a gap, occasionally a backside test and a run higher. The market repeats patterns. Okay, and so don't get bearish. Don't get bearish down here, guys. That's all I can say. Um, if it breaks, right, I almost guarantee you'll get a backside test. I can't guarantee, obviously, anything, but um, it, I, very high odds of a backside test and then a push lower. Um, I did not think, and let me check again on FOFXCM really quick. Uh, I don't think there's any econ at, there's really no econ afterwards, okay? So after the first hour, we should really settle down, and we'll probably have a pretty nice trading range today, but I would expect, again, because of lack of econ, uh, depending on whatever the Fed speaker says, I would expect balance. Let's go take a look really quick at NQ. Uh, first, let's do NQ in reverse. Let's do the, um, and now I want to look at the 24-hour ES as well. Okay, so importantly here, notice, okay, hold on a sec here. Notice, here's NQ, here's ES. Notice that while ES is actually broken down to a new trading range, that as of yesterday, we did not get below the bottom of this range right in here, this 30, 39.36 to 39.28. Um, if, if we get down here, Globex low was what again? Let me see here. 39.23.75. So we came overnight just below here. We've now snapped back in, and we're trading at 39.43. Okay, so just above here. Okay, so this sets us up very interesting. We're below yesterday's close, but we've but we've held the range, right? And my suspicion is, is if we come in here, NQ is still stronger. It has not broken down, right? If we come in and test Globex low. We snap back above this 39.28. Uh, my guess is we're going to squeeze back up and at least into this 39.68 
trade location um, and possibly to this uh, low volume node right over here at 3990 is certainly a possibility and remember this 4000 is key don't get stuck in all I can say is don't get stuck that we're in a bear market because I think we're in a two-sided market which is different I think we could quite easily trade down here trade all the way up here and trade all the way back down here by the end of the day very very easily the rotation size that I'll be looking for in the first hour primarily is a 30 point NQ trade rotation for taking scalp trades or zone trades. I want to see a 30 point stretch and I'm going to be using a 10 point stop behind that. Why? Normally my stretch I'm looking for is 15 points. Volatility has been close to 100, the range has been close to 100 points for two days in a row. You have to adjust your range size. Okay, also very, very important. When volatility increases, ES becomes easier to trade because it has significantly higher uh, institutional participation. That means that its behavior patterns, meaning the snaps off the zones, are much more predictable than an NQ. When volatility increases, um, there's a very high retail participation and NQ is thinner. Therefore, it can get very vertical very quickly. It can overshoot its support and resistance zones by 5 to 15 points easily and still snap back. Most of us don't have the P&L tolerance. I certainly don't at the size that I trade to handle those those overshoots. So the way that I do it is I push back 30 points and additionally, this is important, I make sure that ES is at an important support or resistance zone before taking the NQ. This saves me the trouble of getting ripped. And what you'll notice is if when you're in the room with me more and more, when the volatility comes in, I trade more and more NQ because it's more volatile than ES is and provides me with quick rotations in and out. Okay. When volatility is bigger, my focus goes more and more to ES because it's more predictable for me. And again, I'm not interested in the big shot. I don't need it. I've been increasing my trading size over time. When I get it, like I did yesterday, and I have a really nice rip, okay, that's a nice bonus. But the whole entire concept behind my methodology is that all I need is one or two trades a day of two points a piece to build my trading account. And I increase my trade size incrementally, and I finance that with prior wins at a high win rate. Okay, so I'm not looking for the home run. For those of you who are new in the room, you'll ra rarely say me see 20 point target up or even seven or eight point target down, except at the extreme point location. So I think it's important to note we're, we're breaking on ES. NQ has not broken. And until we're trading definitively below that 39, 28, 50 and holding, I consider NQ simply traveling to the bottom of the range. And as you can see, traveling to the bottom of the range often results in a travel back to the top of the range, although not usually in one day, but can happen when Fed is helping us out. Okay, so let's go over to that chart really quick. How am I doing on time? Not good. Thank you. Seal's breaking, guys. It holds above that 85. Looks pretty good. Okay, so on NQ. Lots of poorly auctioned area below. Globex low landed at 1923 and three quarters. I believe that's still correct. Okay, this is the current um, this is the current swing low area that um, that I pointed out. Let me make sure I've got that right. Give me just one second here. I looked a little bit lower on the, but that is correct. Okay, so this was the last swing low. Importantly, a trade I will be looking for today. Okay. I'll be looking to see if we can trade down here, break, come to Globex low, get a response to buy, and trap back above, particularly if this is poorly auctioned here for a slingshot back into Thursday's low. From there, it becomes a question mark as to whether we push in or we push down. Currently trading 39.40, which puts us right above the swing low. So again, Globex low, hopefully we'll push back up. If we break, I am really particularly looking for, right, um, if we get a 30-point swing from 39.40, puts us to 39.10, which is right where we have a poorly auctioned area. I would either look for a response there, and I, w I am willing, there's no time limit on this area right here. As a matter of fact, what I'll probably do on my NQ in this area is cut my trade size in half and double my stop. Usually I have a 10-point stop. I'll probably use a 20-point stop from the back of the zone. Um, 
in this area. Okay, uh, this is an open gap. It'd be a great place for a reversal and a push back up. Um, so that is my trade plan there. Be aware that if we get into this area down to the swing low and we don't respond to get back above the swing low, that really is truly poorly auctioned down to 38.98 three quarters. We'll have a lot better idea in about seven minutes as to how this day is going to go. I intend to watch. I intend to watch. Okay, I say this every day. I intend to watch for the first 15 minutes. If I see a scalp set up, I will call it. But I intend to watch for the first 15 minutes. Yesterday, there was plenty of trades way past the first hour. Right? I don't want to get buried early in the day. I hate getting buried early in the day. So it's going to be very clear for me. Um, the last thing I wanted to show here really quickly, because I didn't get to do a trade review. Um, actually, so let me do this. Let me set up my charts real quick, and then I'll do that. One sec. Okay, 400 tick. Insert symbol tick. Okay, I keep a one-minute chart with a, uh, to look for one-minute tick divergence on another screen. I flash it over when I see it, but it got too too dirty on one screen to have all that on there, so I eliminated it. Okay, and let's get this over here. Let's get rid of CL, NQ, ES. Okay, we got four minutes. I can show this really quick. Got my chart set up. One, two, three, four, CL, 400 tick. Ticker. Okay, and let us. Okay, let's see if I can do this quickly and effectively. Okay, the quick and dirty version. Yesterday we open, we get to the first support level, response to buy back up for two points. It actually missed by a tick, but close enough for hand grenades, right? Secondly, we come into the white zone for the first time, rotation up for two, two plus. Eventually, it, I think it actually gave um, six or five, excuse me, five up, right? And you'll see when we're in a trend day down that a lot of times we'll get resistance right back up in those zones. Uh, you'll also notice the first time into the zone is the focus, right? Why? Sometimes the second bounce works. That's true. But the third can flush you, right? We then get a rotation. Notice this rotation is from 1945. Not quite to 1955, but it's an eight-point rotation, a five-point rotation. Really didn't help you because you got short squeezed. Um, this is actually um, – I did not get a short here. Uh, this is when, um, hell, someone was speaking. I forget who was speaking yesterday. It doesn't matter. Oh, ECB president, man. Okay, you can see the rip down. Okay, again, um, I forget why I had this here, but I don't think I had a zone there, actually. This was the pre-FOMC high, this long, first time in. Obviously, yielded a nice rotation from 33 to 38. Obviously, we easily got the two-point scale there. Uh, first time into 1927.50, two points plus scale there. Okay, back of the zone held. I did not take the back of this 1925.50. I did take the short right here. This is based on a day trade. <coughs> excuse me, set up, and then 
Finally, um, I missed my 1920 exactly by one tick. To the upside, you can see the first time into the zone it rejected. I did not mean to move that. I apologize. And then back, this was the third time. Really wasn't a valid test, although I suspected on 10-point rotation that we would get rejection out of here. Excuse me a second. <coughs> and if you give me two minutes to grab my coffee, I'll be right back. We open in two minutes. Uh, again, the, the point being here, focus is for newer traders, first time into the zone. You will see me calling scalp trades this morning. Okay, they're more aggressive. Again, I'm not asking and suggesting anyone new in the room not follow my trades, but instead use this as a learning opportunity, right, to see how I trade. The idea is a high level of consistency day in, day out, right? Some days that means I get no trades. Most days I get at least one or two. And when it's nice like this, sometimes we get really big, fat, nice trades. We're opening at 1921 um, right into, let me close this. We're opening at 1921, right into Thursday's low. Again, my focus is really, I'm going to get rid of this 1955.50. Everyone who wants it can have it. This is my focus for my first long trade location, and I'm looking for a potential open drive lower or open drive higher. I will call them as I see them. We're now open. Give me two seconds. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, so we're open. They're obviously trying to push below Thursday's low, this 1918 area. Um, again, I'm expecting them to come in and test this, test the Globex lows this morning. So now we actually do have uh, the issue of gap fill and open drive lower, right? On particularly on NQ. So let's see what they are, if anything, able to do with it. 
So half gap right now on NQ. I don't have too many. Is right there. That's the back of a poorly auctioned area. It'll be a great place for rejection, actually. These really quick. We don't need all this. Okay, and on NQ. I'll continue to adjust that once I see it rebound. Again, first time into Globex Low, I would be very surprised not to see a response. Or before. Again, uh, very interesting. Notice this gap, okay, into the swing low. Um, I would suspect does hold the first time. We didn't quite get down to that 39, 23 and 3 quarters yet. But give them time. They've already bounced it a good 10 points off, right? So if it's 39, 23 and we add, and we add 30, right? That puts us at 39, 53 right in between this point and Thursday's low, okay? So this is an area, if I'm going to take a short, that I'm interested in taking, okay? Right back up into that 50-60 retrace on ES and a backside test of Thursday's low. It's critical that it holds that 1920 level. If it busts through, uh, it could move fairly, fairly hard to the upside. I've got a feeling that it won't. If you're an aggressive trader, this is where you want to take take that short with your stop being whatever the swing high was of that first five minutes. Guys, I see there's a lot of questions here. Uh, so I'll answer once again. Uh, Michael, yes, with coaches. Uh, Andrew Meneker, very good on the psychology side. I still work with him uh, pretty much weekly. And uh, Dr. Jeff Baldridge. I still work with both of those guys weekly. Okay, so we're pushing right up into that 50-60, guys. And we're back above Thursday's low. Yeah, I, I don't intend to stay on every day, although I have so far. I've actually enjoyed it. I didn't intend to stay on, but two, the idea is two to three days a week I'll be on live. The NQ and ES charts along with the CL charts, I don't always post the CL every night. If I can't figure it out, I don't post it. But, um, yes, that is correct. Okay, so we're back up into the middle of this range. And, again, uh, Globex High will be the next area of testing. Again, I'm expecting balance. Nice BP, I agree with that. I know I didn't get down there, but I agree with it. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions I missed. 
And T, if you're having audio issues, just drop out and drop back in. I haven't heard anyone else having audio issues. Let's see on the Skype thing. Nice job, IB, on you're just owning that thing. I didn't get a chance. Although I may not be done yet. But you're the king of CL. Okay, so Globex High is coming up at 1928, guys. If you're looking at a 5060 retrace, just be aware you we're running right into Thursday's low. Okay, this rotation size is 23 to 53. That's a 30-point rotation. So I am taking CL short here. Okay, we're coming into that 1928 uh, level on ES. I missed it by just a hair the first time. But if I can get back up here one more time, I will take a short. I do have a short, uh, if I didn't say it. Uh, I took it right back here at 1953. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, excuse me, I apologize. Uh, 30, um, forgive me, dyslexia moment. 39.53 is where I took uh, an NQ short, and I am uh, trying desperately to get this 19.28, but they're not giving it to me. Okay, so they did it just the opposite way as I thought. There's too many shorts that squeezed in. Low Globex low. Uh, they have recaptured the current swing low and pushed back up into Thursday's high. And I basically have 10 points to make this trade work. 10 points will stop me on this trade. And I haven't done anything on ES yet. I'm watching closely. The tick is just now positive. We opened actually with quite a negative tick, a negative 800 tick. So the the move back up doesn't surprise me, at least at this point. And again, I will take a short at 19, 1928-ish if they'll um, give it to me. I'm on hold here. Haven't pulled the trigger yet, guys. I'm watching. Okay, I'll take a short right here at 1928.75. Be aware that I'm a little early on this, and we could push back to this 1938, okay? Okay, so it adds a bit of risk because the stop, I'm going to use a stop two points behind this 1932, okay?
for a scale on this is going to be 1926.75. if I can get it. Again, it's early, and this is aggressive. And we are showing potential open drive higher with that bar. We're just moving right into Globex highs and into Thursday's lows on NQ. This one. Okay, there's nothing that says I can't get short squeeze straight up. It would suck. Okay, that's the risk of trading the first 15 minutes into this stuff is if I get ramrodded, it won't be the first time it's happened to me trying to get, and even then I wasn't being overly aggressive, but yeah, and as you can see, so 1932 plus two points puts me at 1934 as my stop, so I chose to get aggressive if we get into that white zone, um, wow, I'm going to have a decision to make at that point. And I'm getting awfully close to a stop here on NQ. So, did a good job not getting short down here, but I may get run over anyways. That is, by the way, open drive higher. So I'll need a failed open drive higher at this point to make this trade work. And down she comes. I don't move my stops, by the way, for those of y'all that are new. Once I put the stop in, I don't move it unless there's an extremely logical reason, like I have to adjust it by a tick because I'm right at the back of a zone or something to that effect. But generally speaking, I 99.999, I just take the stop. And again, we've run clear over. We've not filled the gap yet on NQ, so it's possible we still come in for gap fill. Obviously, we've done more than that on ES. And I'm not far off. And that's why I don't panic on my stops either. So now the other side of this coin, again, this is all scalping setups, guys, at this point. I have no idea in terms of okay keep in mind the retrace at this point puts us again in a poorly auctioned area again and I would focus my if I was going to try and take a counter at uh, 39 uh, um, 3934 as opposed to taking it in the middle of the range so almost up, now I'm up on my NQ for the time being, and ES, I'm up a solid tick. And I'm on chill mode. I got a feeling we have balance more than we have a, a move one way or the other, but we shall find out shortly. Okay, so there's no easy way to mitigate the risk early in the morning, right? Uh, other than to say that's open drive higher, if you want to bail, you can do so now with relatively minimal damage. 
I'm just going to stay with the trade. If I get stopped, I get stopped. Of course, getting squeezed like that is not the most pleasant way to start the uh, Friday morning. Uh, you know, that's a lot. I, I realize that's straight out of, uh, 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 Mike, I realize that's uh, straight out of um, um, volume profile and market profile terminology. I don't. I don't look at it that way. So just so you all know, how have a little background of how I came into this is that I'm very dyslexic uh, ADD wise. And so I try to make it as few decisions as possible. I can I see the rejection we had lower and obviously we trapped back above Thursday's low. But I try to make as few decisions as humanly possible with regards to whether it the very specific type of open that it is because I find that I can't translate that into uh, profitable trades. What I can translate into profitable trades are um, rotation size. Uh, for example, on um, NQ, normally under well, formally, I guess there's no, there's no normal, but formally I would take and look for a 15 point rotation. Today I said specifically I would look for a 30 point rotation before taking a trade, and so I'm more concerned about rotation size and into um, support resistance levels than I am. Damon, I don't know what you're referring to on the link. Give me a second, guys. The screen looks frozen. Okay, well, here, I can stop it and restart it. Let's see if that will help. Okay, do you all see the screen now? It should be unfrozen. If you still don't see the screen, you need to log out and log back in. Okay, great. So the point of that is I look for the trade size rotation and not the, um, as opposed to trying to identify what type of drive, I realize it helps most people, but if you're ADD or dyslexic, that becomes a nightmare. So I've, you'll notice my charts are stripped to very, very basic things. I look for, on my scalps, uh, what 50, 60 retraces and occasionally modify, what I call modify 50, 60 retrace. I don't go into that, but uh, right now, and I look for key, but key to that is rotation size and extension. Um, and then the rest of it is watching price action and just learning from that price action. So um, um, obviously on this NQ, my first scale is going to be here in just a second. 39, let's call it 39, uh, it's moving so fast, 39.49 and a quarter scale. And that's a quarter scale. And obviously, we've gotten our um, uh, two points on uh, ES. And again, that was the third scale right there, so I have two-thirds left. I, I don't know if I mentioned that before. If I didn't, I apologize. So, everyone, so look, if you have a smaller account, everyone should have plus two in the bank if you took that trade with me on ES. Okay, if you're a less aggressive trader, just move your stop to break even. Okay, scaling again, 39.44, down to half. Okay, and I am taking another scale at 19.24 and a quarter, but it's small. That basically leaves me with a half the position. Okay, so that was plus four. Four and three quarters. We're moving fast now, guys. And my pens are not working for me this morning. I have a whole box of broken pens. Okay. OK, 
Okay. Anyone get that besides me? Or is everyone just a, a spectator? Okay, so let, let's be key here. We're in a 50-60 retrace, but in a poorly auctioned area. Again, this is the area I'm looking to close out, that final portion, and just leave a trailer out, okay, on NQ. But realize on NQ we've rotated down now from the entry. Um, oh, wow, I'm having to do math in the morning. Not a good thing. Uh, we're down 53 to 40, 13 points, okay? That's $260 a contract. Don't let it come all the way back against you. Okay, as a matter of fact, I'll scale again here, 39, 39. Okay, so from 39.53, 39.39, gosh, guys, someone help me out with the math here, 40, 24 points, okay, that's a big trade, okay, uh, again, this thing is moving very fast and very furiously, okay, I am now um, flatting out at 39.40, all out NQ, 39.40, if it rolls over to zero, I'll look at it the other place, 39.40, all done. Okay, and I'm going ahead and moving down to a quarter position at 1924.75. Okay, so I have a quarter left, stopped to break even, cross my fingers on that. But I didn't expect it to reject that hard that fast. I'll take advantage of it. So all flat NQ, that was a nice trade. I'll take, you want to hand me 20 points in the morning, I'll take it. Actually, it wasn't 20 points. It was 12. I'm sorry. My math is off. 39.53 to 39.39. 40. 13 points. I apologize. Guys, I'm totally dyslexic in ADD. Never, ever trust my math or my addition or subtraction. My charts are the only thing you should look at and say these have a reasonable chance of being right. My math sucks. Um, so that should be, everyone should have been able to bag on trailers. Four points there. I have a quarter left. On ES, fingers crossed, stop, 1928.75 on balance. That was a damn good morning to start the morning. And also a great example, by the way, of why I don't move my stop. I came within a hair of getting stopped two points, I believe, and I don't move my stops. I don't panic out of them. You just can't tell when they're going to work, uh, only on from a statistical basis, right? And you can see we came right into this 50-60 retrace, and we'll get in a response. Thanks, David. Great job, BP. Thank you, Melissa. Natural Chad, is that naturally or, or unnaturally? He was pretty old. So, guys, at any rate, the whole point of this is, by the way, when I'm teaching people, look, I am the most... Um, when I came, the way I came to this is, so I ran a hedge fund for about 10 years. I f went into the hedge fund world completely through the back door. Um, one of those guys that in school, I, I could barely read and I could barely do math uh, because of my dyslexia. And I had to learn different ways of learning, um, mostly through pattern recognition. What that gave me was very good chance, very, made me very good at looking at charts and reading patterns very, very quickly and, and seeing in my mind how they would complete. What it didn't do has ever improved my math skills uh, or my spelling skills, which are still uh, still completely atrocious. And also, if you know anyone who has ADD or who is uh, dyslexic, they are um, terribly, uh, the, I mean, just, night and, and I mean in a nightmarish way, they are, um, I don't know how to say this, they're, they're just not very good at, at um, impulse control. All the rules I've developed over this time, entry, exit, stop rules, not moving my stops, so on and so forth, was because I used to take these 30% drawdowns consistently. Um, and um, while I would always find a way to recover, uh, it, you know, look, if you have a 100% year and you have a 100K account, and you lose 30%, you're only having a 40% year, which is all good. 40% is good. 
but that really sucks. And I, um, back around 2001, 2002, I said there had to be a better way to do this. And uh, that's when I went to get a, I finally said I wasn't going to be able to do it by myself. I went and hired uh, multiple trading coaches, first uh, Dr. Jeff a long, long time ago, and then uh, more recently uh, Dr. Maneker, who I was referred to, um, and is very, very good. I tried to get Brett Steinberger to work with me, and he will only work with you if you're actually running a hedge fund, and he charges pretty damn close to $800 to $1,000 an hour. So that's kind of uh, painful. Um, so all that being said, um, uh, what I learned was the majority of this game is psychological and simply um, eliminating how many decisions you have to make through the course of the day, right, um, that you can't control, that I'm not a super trader, you can't control the entire environment, okay, and that um, all you can do is identify your highest odd places. You have to make sure you really have an edge, okay, and then try to do less usually equals more, okay, and then find importantly what matches your personality with your um, with your constraints some of my constraints are I can't maintain my my focus all the way through the day without taking breaks most people can't okay and I can only trade so many products like I haven't looked at CL hopefully it hasn't rolled over to the downside yet but I need to pull my chart up there okay and, and if NQ goes to zero I'm not worried about it I will find another way to get it but we're still above that swing low Okay, and like I said, I think this is where we'll stop being poorly auctioned, where we will find uh, more of responsive buyers. And then Thursday lows become very important here in ES. I still think we have a shot at this 1912, actually, um, which is why I left a small portion on it for that trade. I'm not sure on NQ. We, we just haven't broken on NQ, so there's no point in trying to bet that we're going to break. Um, once it's done, the trades will get a lot easier there on proper rotation size. Um, I need my NQ chart, my CL chart. CL is due a bounce, guys. Everyone and their brothers I mentioned last night has been raping that thing to the short side. It's been a great ride, but it's gotten too easy, I think, to the short side. It's certainly not short unless we get back below 84, um, 86 again. So... That's my two cents there. I'm watching closely and carefully on that CL. I'd like to get a trade there today. NQ coming on down, ES coming down. Again, I can't emphasize enough, if you've gotten your money, okay, that was a nice trade. This morning, if you got your a couple, of, it looks like a couple of y'all got long. I did not. I obviously got it from the short side. Um, I can't emphasize enough. We've come back. That breaking that swing low will not be easy. Okay, people will fight to defend that swing low. Okay, um, and I'm totally prepared to have this last trade on NQ taken out, break even, and then also importantly, I can sit back. Uh, Michael, I, I, uh, I dropped out of high school in 10th grade, and then I proceeded to graduate from the University of Texas multiple years later uh, in 19, uh, December of 1993. So um, the dropout was just so I could use a word processor. They wouldn't let you do it in high school. They let you do it at community college. But back then, using a word processor was cheating. Without a word processor, I can't spell. So uh, that was a pretty easy. They failed me in English two times with a 69. And uh, I wanted to be a trader, so I didn't have time to west, mess around with uh, spelling correctly. Traders don't have to spell well, they have to trade well. So I already knew I wanted to be a trader then. So, And uh, I knew I needed a piece of paper from a university. Of course, I thought that would get me a job on Wall Street. Little was I, woe was I mistaken. Uh, it turns out you really do have to have a 4.0 if you want to get into a, a hedge fund. They don't care how well you trade.
Nice. EE, e. well, Stuart, you can clearly do math, and I can't. <laughs> but that's good. Yeah, high school is not everything that they make it up to be, and it doesn't teach you much about independent thinking um, or how to figure things out. So as you can see, we're coming all the way back down through that swing low. Maybe I wish I left that trailer on uh, on NQ, but that's okay. No big deal. And here's the big deal here, guys. Guys, people get roiled in this. Like, this isn't even funny how bad trading accounts get chopped up. If this thing goes to zero now, I do not care. I've, I've gotten my money. I've gotten paid this morning, right? We're still looking for 30-point rotation, so we're right in. I would expect a response here right down to this poorly auctioned area, maybe a little bit more. And I really expect balance the first half of the day. There's no news to drive us, so I'm looking for tick divergence. Right now, but the tick is plus or minus 500 really since we've opened. We didn't go to an extreme on either side, and we're right into support on Thursday's low. So this is a so if we look at this, right, this is break of Thursday's low, test the Globex high. I was afraid we'd push up into here, and we did, which is why I moved my stop two points behind. Now we're back into Thursday's low, right? But I don't have any tick divergence at all. Okay, so my guess is, Okay, so now if you took that trade, by the way, guys, you have, um, uh, hold on one second here. Okay, if you took that trade here at 1928 and three quarters, you now have eight and a quarter points. That's a monster trade on most days, okay? Please make sure you scaled some of it. And in that spirit, I will scale half of the quarter that I have left. So I'm just going to have a tiny amount left. If it goes home run, big deal. Eight and a quarter is, is nice. That feed me all weekend long. Jackson, did you nail that this morning, buddy, on the 30 rotation? Okay, so I want everyone to clear. I'm taking. I have just a few contracts left now, short on this. Okay, cool. Make sure you scale. I mean, we could come down to this 1912. I have no doubt about that. But take, you know, leave something for the home run. But don't get greedy, overly greedy either. Okay, so um, again, if it breaks down, we'll have plenty of shorting opportunities. Okay, but right now we're just at the bottom of the range. We've come right into where it's done being poorly auctioned, literally right down on uh, NQ. I don't want to get too cute, so I'm not taking the flip side. Okay, so we're basically poorly auctioned up and poorly auctioned down. And so now I, basically what that tells me is I don't want to trade in any of this at all. Um, the 5060 retrace on this right now. Well, actually, that 3940 might be a nice location for a pushback down on NQ, but um, we're below the swing low now, and we're below Thursday's low. So the next area I want is 1911 and a quarter to 1912 and three quarters. Okay, and I'd like to see either tick extreme or tick divergence in there. There's not much in between holding us. I know we rejected here. We may again, but more importantly, I'm not in a rush. Usually, the market will give me a pretty easy in somewhere in the day. And uh, the other thing is it's Friday, and I'm uh, realistically I'm tired. Um, it's been a long week, uh, particularly with CL and having to manage CL. I had a monster, monster, monster week and month there so far, uh, but it has worn me down just a little bit. So, again, I've scaled, okay? Everyone now has 10 points on this thing if you took it where I did or if you took it better. And congratulations to those who did it. Jackson, I knew you had that. Damien, did you did you take that, buddy? That was right right into that zone, just like we discussed yesterday. On the upside. That 1929. Same thing, Jen. First time into the zone. Right? Up here. And if not. Make sure you mark your statistics. So something I haven't mentioned to newer guys is, so most of my coaching clients, I'll have them work on spreadsheets and statistics and keeping the data because what you don't want to rely on is me 
to tell you the truth. There's always a barrier. Even if I'm the even if I'm George Soros, George Soros has had losing trades too, right? Your mind's always going to go, what if this is his time to lose money, right? So what you need to do is build statistics on the zones, right? And how they work, and or if they don't work, or if they do work, or whatever the case may be. But what you don't want to do, what you don't want to do under any circumstance, is you don't want to go in, and um, you don't want to go in and um, um, have to trust me on every single trade. You want to be able to look at your spreadsheet and trust yourself and your spreadsheets. Um, and that is the key to becoming an independent trader. Otherwise, you're forever. We're right into Globex Low on um, on NQ. I would consider it technically tested here, okay? Uh, and would actually look for a rebound for a possible short. I, man, it's a hard area. We're below the swing low. Um, swing wise, 3062 to 3032. We got no reaction, so 3030 really brings me to. 3,900 in this high odds location. This is where I'll look to take a trade. I would expect a possible rejection right here, but so again, you never know uh, when you're going to get a good trade and when it's not. But I will tell you, tell you this: we had neg negative 851, and I'm closing my ES right here. 1917, all done. Flat. Everyone get that? 1917, flat. No problem. It was early in the morning. It was open drive. It looked like it was an open drive higher initially. It wasn't the easiest setup. Uh, flip a coin. I want to say so. Rotation wise, that's 1929 to 1912, 1930. It's. I'd say yeah, the first time in, but don't hang around too long. Don't hang around too long. I'd like to get tick divergence. That was an easier cover because of the tick extreme, but we've already bounced off of that, right? And I would actually say the first time back to Thursday's low into ES is a potential short. The rotation size won't be big enough. But, all right, so we broke through. So here's the problem with this zone. See how we traded through easily one way? We can trade through easily the other way, right? So look, the safer choice, the less risky choice, better way to put it, is this right but that puts you into poorly auction territory so what usually happens okay if it's a weak market we'll come into 50 retrace and continue lower if it's a strong market 50 retrace push to the 62 retrace and then push down the problem is you're then trapped below Thursday's low this is a wicked little area right here and I'm going to prefer to either look down here or down here for my next trade but we can relax a little bit Guys, BP, you got that first trade, right? You nailed that with the trailer. And hit me on Skype if you can, please. It's hard for me to see this conversation. No trailer. Leave trailers, man. You and I have discussed that a couple of times. I'm not scolding you. I'm just saying leave the trailers, especially in a wide range. Okay, guys, we're coming into this uh, 15, 6, uh, 16, 12, 11 uh, NQ support zone. Okay, remember on NQ, NQ is thinner, has less institutional participation. We're below the current swing low, okay? Um, 
and we're below Globex low, it can get very damn thin. Okay, I'm more apt in more volatile markets to stick with the S than I am with NQ. Yes, NQ can give you the moonshot. That's true. Uh, so ways of countering that. You can reduce trace size or you can just focus on ES. Okay. Also, you don't have to catch the free fall. We can wait for a retrace, which we'll almost certainly get. I am short 84.96 in an aggressive CL trade. I would not recommend anyone follow me on that thing. Okay, so we're coming right down into this Globex low, this first area here. Okay, I have a tight leash on this uh, CL, by the way. Guys, this thing has to hold pretty closely below 85.15 or I'm done. I am looking for tick divergence, guys. Okay, you notice we came right into this poorly auctioned area and got a response. That was expected. Okay, so now the question is, how strong a response do we get out of there? And again, when we're free falling, I'm a little bit more cautious. Okay, our 50, 60, right back up into this swing low, which is where I'm really interested in trying to take a short back to the downside versus trying to guess in the middle of free fall land. Uh, whether we're going to get along or not. But right off that 39, 12, and 3 quarters, uh, I mean, uh, 19, 12, and 3 quarters, sorry, guys. Uh, wow. And it's already giving you essentially, well, 12, yeah, it's already giving you your two points. Front of the zone already tested. My bad. I wasn't fast enough there. I don't think you could have gotten filled size-wise. And I'm still looking for a test of that globe is slow. Well, you could have gotten failed. 1950 was it. 30 contracts went off at 1950. I'd hate to be the sucker who bailed there. That would make me feel like crap. So I'm playing for potential trap back to the downside on CL from 84.94. That's pretty harsh considering we've already had a 60-point rotation lower. Okay, guys, this is going to be very common, but you got what you got to remember is we're going to have a lot of 10 ups and 10 downs, right? You don't miss, there's no missing a trade. I promise you we'll get more setups, even if you don't get it perfect. Okay, so a given, I would have liked to have taken that 19, 12, and three quarters. I need one minute tick divergence now. We had tick extreme coming into that right at the low. Okay, and I would like to see tick divergence on the back side of that test at 19, 11 and a quarter now. Okay, if not, here's the problem. NQ is getting into this poorly auctioned area. I will take a trade first time into this 38, 98, 88. I'll probably go half size, double stop. So I'll end up with a 10-point net stop. I will not take a scale. That will be for a moonshot there, guys, just so you're aware. Okay? Good job, Terry. Nice job. I see a couple of you all got that. I missed it. You can't get everything. I was over on CL, so...
No, I just better hope that thing doesn't rip me. I desperately need that thing below 84.80. Okay, we got a one tick uh, lower and then snap back in. That was not the test of Globex low. I'm still going to insist on a test of Globex low there. So we may bounce. If we bounce significantly, the test of Globex low becomes suspect now. So it's never easy at the bottom, and I'm just going to be patient. Uh, like I said, I've already ripped them beautifully on ES. I ripped them beautifully on NQ, although, granted, I would have liked to stay around a little bit longer than I did. I didn't quite expect that, but that's all right. We can't get the whole thing. We're day traders, right? If you try to get the whole thing every time, you're going to lose your account. There's, there's very few people who can actually do that. Fifty sixty still up here, guys. We're gonna have some nice fat ranges to work with. Okay, scaling eighty four eighty four quarter of the trade plus ten on CL. Just to give myself a little bit of breathing room there. Now, die, baby. If I can get it underneath this, 84.80, and hold, um, we can retest those lows. But nothing's promised in CL. That thing is just a death machine. The original Widowmaker. Okay, remember, these are still the areas that I'm primarily interested in for launching longs, guys. Okay, on ES. Way down here. Okay, not up in here. This is just for, for show and tell, nothing more. This, right, if you look here from our close yesterday, 70. This is 70 down here. I want to see it get nice and smacked. Scale 84.64 plus 30 down to half. So plus 30 ticks on CL and plus 10 on first scale. Plus 30 on second scale, that averages me out to 15 on the whole, and um, I am moving stop to break even. Wish me luck. But now I can take my concentration off of that and let it do what it's got to do. Okay, well, that was a nice start on CL. If we can get a home run out of that on the second half, nice. Okay, where are we here? We're down into these levels. I'd be cautious until CL, until NQ gets all the way through this on taking ES, just so you're aware. Again, my plan is, very frankly, to take a half-size position, 38.98. So this is a big stop, right? 38.98 and 20 behind. Okay, so that means I end up losing essentially 15 points on a full-size position on this trade. Okay, be aware of that. We're right into Globex low, and we are not we are not on tick divergence. Okay, we had tick extreme 
The best setup for the day will be tick divergence, followed by after tick extreme, after tick extreme, okay? Yeah, and I'm being extremely patient. I don't miss trades. All they can do is set me up for the next one if I don't get one. It's just a constant train rolling on over. Come on down. I am sitting at 38.99 for a long. Scale a bit more, 84.54. Okay, that's plus 40. That leaves me with a quarter. Okay, and now that quarter really is for the home run. Okay, 84.54 plus 40 on CL. Nice, I just took 54 IB. Nice job. I'm leaving the last quarter to see if they'll roll it to the lows. And I'm at 38.99, guys. And if I miss it by two ticks, that would be sick. Come on. I just missed my trade by two ticks. That's sick. Okay. No problem. I'm still chilling. I'm still 38.99. That's a big wide zone in there. Long, $38.99. Y'all all know the plan there, right? Half size. Okay, we're playing with fire. This thing can get very, very illiquid. We're below Globex low on ES. Okay, and that's why I said to watch out on Globex low. Make sure that you get into this area first. Okay. Okay, guys, see y'all getting cool. Hey, yeah, I hope you took your scale, BP. Okay, if you're not going for the moonshot with me, I would scale at 5 up, 39.04 to 39.05. Leave a trailer, but take some off. Okay, that's a nice trade. They're not going to make the bottom easy, I promise you. And I might regret trying to stick this. It wouldn't be the first time. Like I said, if you don't get them one way, you can get them the other. 50, 60 retrace is all the way the hell up here, but there's nothing that says it has to get up here. Okay, let's see if we can trap at Globex lows on ES. Come back for a test of Thursday's lows. IB maybe, but buddy, I'm not sure. It's early for capitulation.
on NQBP are you talking about? Okay, and again, that's why off the top of this zone, you take your two, you move your stop to break even, it's not a high odd zone, and you let it work. If, it, if your scales work and it doesn't come back and tag you out, you're good. If it comes back and tags you out, so what? You got your money, move on. There's no way to predict what the market's going to do. If we did, we all would have made a fortune this morning. I just would have said short the high and don't cover, but I don't know that. Okay, if you can't handle the fact that we might rip through this area, okay, then get out while you still can okay it's it's an emotional thing okay I have no way of knowing that the trade will work okay uh, we have extreme negative tick here but we do not have and we had we did not get tick divergence there okay I want to be clear we did not get tick divergence into those lows on ES okay I just think that's a good area on C on, on NQ I know it's gonna be a hard trade I'm looking for a big reward I'm willing to take my chop here. I've also had a very big week despite my performance on Thursday. I've had a very big week, and I've gotten paid like a king on CL for three weeks now almost. So, again, that's why I said take that scale at 04. That was five points, right? You've got to be able to take your scales, okay, because uh, – well, because life is very difficult if you don't. And unless you're specifically doing what I was doing, specifically, there's no need to have your, you know, backside kicked in. And, and realize I have a trade plan for what I'm doing out of that area, okay? I have a certain amount of money set up to take trades like this. I, I trade against that on a constant basis, um, so on and so forth. And let's get rid of this red. We all know it's a high odds reversal area. Let me fix this. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're into this weak zone here. What did I say we need? We need tick divergence, and we don't have it, right? So I could be crying here in a little bit. Well, I won't cry, but I could get stopped. Okay, I made it extremely clear that this was an aggressive trade. We came off already. We need tick divergence. They're trying to bounce it here at this point, and really for, for the sake of my CL trade, I mean my NQ trade, I hope they do, I could use a move back up at this point. Rotation-wise, let's not lose track of the rotations. From high to low, we've had 1929, so 1930, down to 1906. Still not a 30-point rotation. We had a 40-point rotation yesterday, I believe, from high to low. Someone correct me if I was wrong on that, please. So that would put us at 1891, if, if that's true, right? So please keep up with that and be aware. So they're trying to push from here. Again, I don't move my stops. I was already committed to it. I'm staying with my trade plan no matter what happens. There's always another trade. Had I known we were going to melt down and free fall, I wouldn't have taken the trade. But had I known we were going to free fall, I wouldn't have covered the other one either. I don't know. point is just stay calm and cool doesn't matter today does not matter it's what matters over a hundred trades okay today does not matter that being said let's see 39 10 to 39 20 
So if that weak zone holds, you could argue that it was the smallest of tick divergence there. But I was prepared here, not here. I was in poorly auctioned area. Usually the pattern we follow in poorly auctioned areas is that. So this is all poorly auctioned all the way up. Okay, so I want you to be I want to be really, really clear so you can see on the other side of this thing. This is all poorly auctioned, all of it. What that means is we can V shape, okay, and come all the way back up. So it doesn't mean that we will. You just got to be totally clear that that's what can happen. This is also a very characteristic model of when we get thin of what can happen in NQ. Okay, so if you're nervous on NQ, you took the NQ trade, you did not reduce size, okay, be aware, okay, this would not be the first thing, time I've seen that thing go straight 100 points. We have recent demonstration of that on Wednesday or Thursday, whatever that day was, Wednesday, 100 points up, okay. So it is possible to get 100 points. It is possible to lose 100 points. Know your risk. Be comfortable with it. And if you look at it and you go, you know what, I don't have the trade plan or the mental discipline to do it, don't take the trade. There's easier days. That's the advantage of trading a small account. Also, the first, the, those first moves when we get moves like that are the, are the easiest. We're only an hour into this thing. I mean, this could be a, a rodeo all day long, guys. Ticks back to negative, a whole negative 700, right? So let's see what they can do here. I'd really like to see that 39.91 hold. And see, this really is, is, is a bit of a whip because normally you would expect the bounce from right here like they tried the first time. And in a strong market, right, that's exactly what happens. You get the whip. In the weak market, they shake, 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 and then go. So we may be in the blender here for a little bit. I don't even know where CL is if I've gotten stopped. And I've gotten stopped on CL. Sorry, I didn't even see the report. But I am flat on that last quarter. So I think my best scale on that, uh, without looking at my spreadsheet, was um, 40 ticks. So I think I got, I think I got 10, 10. 1020 and 40 or 1030 and 40. I'll go back and look once everything settles down. And let's go in queue. Guys, remember to scale if you're a smaller trader and you're not doing what I'm doing. Okay? Please remember to scale and look for the trap now on ES. Look for the trap above for a backside test of this 1920. That backside test, I might consider a short. That would give me a road test from 1906. 10 up gives us 1916. We might get rejection there, but I really would rather us have it up here. Okay. Everyone should have an opportunity to take a profit on that thing at this point if you took it with me. And guys, I'm trying to get up to the messages as much as possible. TD, TD, Terry, what is TD? Yeah, it is a little bit, I agree. And NQ is catching up to the downside on ES is what's going on. Yeah, that 50, if I can get it. But Jackson, I would scale on this as it's going. As a matter of fact, here, I'll be a good, I'll be a good guy in that show. Uh, uh, 39.08, take a scale of a quarter. There you go. Plus 9.
while having a fairly uh, monster day at this point. Could have been more monster, but that's all right. Monster is monster. Oh, yeah, the, um, it was ever so slight tick divergence. I mean, when we're pounding those negative 1,200s, what I would have liked to have seen is like a negative 1,400, a new low on like a negative 800 would have been perfect, and we still may get that later in the morning, okay? So this is not done yet, guys. Do not think by a long shot that it is done. Um, I would encourage you all highly not to try to do what I'm doing because I might have to take two shots at this, and I really don't want to see this back at flat again on this um, NQ, okay? I really don't want to be flat on it again. I want it to stay positive. So, um, again, I had a very, very nice morning on that CL, ES, and in Q trades, and so it's given me a little bit of room to play here in an area that I really w wanted to play in that I'd highlighted, again, in the trade plan before I ever woke up this morning. I already knew where I wanted to play today, right? makes a massive difference in your ability to stay calm. Believe me, I am a spaz without a trade plan. I'm a spaz with a trade plan sometimes. And give me just a second. I need to grab a power bar or something to eat here real quick. Give me just a sec. I'm muting out.
Okay, guys, it's just a waiting game for me now in terms of uh, of uh, seeing if this works out. Again, I want to highly suggest – oh, hell, I'm terrible. I, I, I hate showing people how to take moonshots without taking scales. Uh, scale, 39, 14, plus 15 points. How about that? I got 39.13. I couldn't get there quick enough. Okay, so very easy choice. Very easy choice from here, guys. You've got a nice fat cushion. You can move your stop down to break even, which is what I'm going to do now. You can move it to the swing low, okay, and hope the low holds, okay, or you can just hope it keeps going. My hope is it just keeps going. <coughs> Balance, so I now essentially have a quarter of a normal position, okay. Stop is at break even. I've taken scales at 9 and uh, 14 points. So that's uh, 280 and 180 on the contracts, and uh, and I, you know, that's a good trade. What else can you say about that? That's it. So the whole, hopefully, what I demonstrated this morning is two things. First of all, you can have a preset trade plan and trade off of it. <clears throat> you don't have to grab every trade that's out there if you allow the rotation sizes to work for you. Okay, and. Um, if you don't get wrapped up in all the emotion, it's a lot easier to trade and realize that it's two-way markets. They go two ways. 30 points off of 38.91 brings up 39.20, and uh, I will probably close all but a few contracts there. I will not short again because I have no idea what we're going to do from here. Like That's about as far as I could really read. It, this is about as much as it makes logical sense to me as to what's going to happen. Remember, we're trading in 30-point ranges. That means 15 points down can bring us back down to 3,900. I'm quite certain that another trade will set up for us, but really what I'm looking at is getting up into this area right up in here. And on ES, I'm looking at getting up in here, Okay, which makes the backside test at Thursday's low a really nice place to try to take a shot back to the downside. But the further we get into Friday, the more choppy it's going to be. It's been a whipsaw day. The easiest trades have clearly at this point passed at 9.48, and we'll see where we're at at 10.30. I have no doubt that more trades will set up. I just don't feel overly motivated to, to uh, take them. So I have a limit in at 39.20. Actually, let's correct that. 39.19.75 to take out the majority of the balance. Done. Okay, and I am down just a handful of contracts. That's 20, that is 21 points, 21.75 I think, and $400 a contract, and a little bit left. So I'm open to questions now because I'm pretty much going to stop trying as hard at this point and relax a little bit and see if something else sets up later today. I don't have a need to constantly keep trading it. The next area I will give a shot at is right is going to be right back in this area right here on NQ or back here on ES. Okay, and the problem is I've already had a monster day and I've got to balance my ego, my desire to push even harder, and the fact of the matter is it's Friday and I don't have to. Questions anyone? I'm open to them. Hit me if you got them. Wow. Crickets. Okay. Did everyone do okay?
Okay, well, I'm going to kill the recording.